Rangdan Xenocide 2 Electric Boogaloo 862.m30 At first, what was believed to be a rogue solar system had begun to make its way into the northeastern boundary of the Imperium. In its wake was left nothing but the cold quiet of the void. It wasn't until multiple Imperial systems had gone completely silent and the threat pushed ever inward that the Imperium finally looked into the eyes of death itself. The Rangda had come, seeking nothing more than to stamp out those ignorant fools who had destroyed their westernmost boundary. Upon first contact with Imperial Navy assets, it was confirmed that what can truly only be described as a miniature solar system was no celestial phenomena, but in fact the gaping maw of the true Rangdan menace. Dozens of battle moons escorted by thousands of ships of all sizes, battleships, cruisers, frigates, corvettes, and a haze of millions of strike craft orbiting the ever-approaching tide. What had once acted as a staging ground for the scouring of Advex Moors soon experienced rage and hellfire unlike anything seen before. Over eight months, the Raven Guard and White Scars garrisoned within the Manufactorums and Havelocks learned the true horror that had only previously been the burden of the Dark Angels. Through heavy losses, the White Scars and Raven Guard slowly adapted to the strategies of these new and most vile Xenos. Waves of enslaved humans and Xenos alike threw themselves at the Imperial Defenders with nothing but blinding hate and rage behind their eyes. As if they had called upon all of their allies, new and old foe alike reared their nasty head. The Sloth, nothing more than parasites on the material realm who would drink the essence of a mortal and leave him as nothing more than a gaunt, skeletal husk. Accompanying them were the base Mechaniths, Goliath beasts who were more akin to a siege engine than any thinking creature, as these beasts would hurl themselves into any Imperial line in an attempt to punch a hole clean through for the Rangda to exploit. Fortunately for the Rangda, and at the behest of the Imperial defenders, the Raven Guard and White Scars Legion had not been privy to the secrets held by their eldest brethren, the First Legion. Dark Angels, much like their Primarch the Lion, held their secrets and tactics close to heart, and never share any information unless absolutely necessary. When a combined force of Dark Angels and Death Guard finally broke the blockade, bringing expertise in fighting those vile Xenos, the tide quickly changed, and the formerly Siege Zana II once more became a beachhead for a push into Rangdon space. What followed was a two-decade-long war in which most records remained hazy at best, with very few pick feeds remaining and rumors of a misprint within the Imperial Guardsmen's uplifting primer. We know for certain that countless Imperial worlds were stripped of both man and material, and 19 systems were left uninhabitable. At the height of this conflict, the Lion himself led a force of at least 300,000 of the Emperor's Angels to reap a bloody tithe upon the world of Texal. It was clear to the Imperium almost immediately that these Xenos were anathema to all the Imperial Creed stood for. This race was to be purged from both map and memory, with veterans silenced or sent to the Emperor's side with the grace of a smoking barrel. With complete silence on the matter and the passing of ten millennia, much has been lost in the way of historical fact. We know for certain that three Primarchs at one point were engaged in the wider conflict, yet the lion receives all the credit, but through questionable sources and some unfortunate misprints, we have scant records and pics of the horrors that unfolded. We know that it was revealed to one of the redacted Primarchs, almost right before they disappear from Imperial record, that the Emperor had been using massive and terribly powerful psychic weapons and using the power of the warp to keep his great crusade marching ever forward. I personally believe the Emperor would kill a Primarch to keep such a secret, as he already has multiple sons who will carry out his will without question, such as the Lion and Lehman Russ. Not to mention, he has both Magnus and Mortarian who he can mold into his ideal psychers. We also know that when these psychic weapons failed, and no power drawn from the warp could help to prevent the onslaught of the Rangda, the Emperor of Mankind, with near limitless psychic abilities, was forced to release a prisoner who had been shackled within Mars for countless millennia, a shard of the greatest of the Catan the being known as the Void Dragon. The Catan began lashing out at the Rangda with the ferocity only matched by the blood god Korn himself. 
As quickly as he was released, the Void Dragon was once more imprisoned within Mars, and the Emperor returned to his crusading duties. Thus began a slow and methodical purging of every rock and every glittering of shrapnel brought to bear against the Imperium. Over a decade, with the combined strength of nine legions, the Emperor's angels strode ever forward towards the northeastern fringes. Through bloody attritional warfare, the proud Rangda and their Xeno allies bled for every inch they had foolishly believed belonged to them. After an Imperial Expeditionary Fleet chanced upon a battered Rangda fleet that was limping back to its own space, the Second Rangdan War, or Xenocide, officially came to an end. Upon its conclusion, only a select handful of Dark Angels were entrusted with the memories of these abominations. The Order of the Broken Claws was formed to stand vigil over the formerly occupied Rangdon space. With anatomical data, and more than likely a Rangdusi or two hanging around, relics of old were first entrusted to the protections of the veterans of the Second Rangdon War. But over time, all of these men would be lost, and soon, all who stood vigil over Advex Moors and what had once been Rangdon space never had seen a Rangda never understood the threat that had once held the knife edge just above the throat of the Imperium.